Good morning. Turn to Psalm 100, please. Psalm 100. We do welcome all of you here to worship today and do hope that you are feeling thankful in your hearts for all that God has given you and what He does for you. This morning is the first of a series of lessons on thankfulness. Uh, through this month of November. And a lot of us are thinking about, what, Thanksgiving, being thankful. We should be thankful all year round and every day of our lives. But if you're like me, sometimes you look around at your, your life, you look at the world and its troubles, you look at wars and rumors of wars, and you think of the economy, and you think of politics, and you think of your health, and you think of what you don't have that you wish you had. And you stop being thankful. And you just look at the problems. God wants us to be thankful people. I would like to read Psalm 100. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord Himself is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and His faithfulness to all generations. As I was getting ready this morning, actually I was sitting on my chair going over my notes and trying to think what I was going to do for introduction well, actually, I thought about it already, but I was sitting there and I looked outside and there was a congregation in my backyard. I saw a little congregation of birds, about ten doves, all in the corner, back corner of our yard. They're all just out there doing stuff. And right next to them was a squirrel. And that squirrel was just having a great time. He was just loving life. He was thankful for being a squirrel, I think. He, if, I wish I could hear what he was thinking. But I think he was probably thinking, look at me, watch this, watch this next. And he'd just flip up and then he'd flip and he'd roll over and then he'd do something and he'd dig around and he'd come back over by those birds and he'd wiggle his tail and he'd jump over them and the birds are just like, you know, just going after their bugs and after their worms. They weren't even thinking that much about this squirrel, but he was having the time of his life. Just, I started laughing and I don't even like squirrels. And we had a lot of problems with squirrels in our backyard, but since we didn't have a garden this year, I don't care. But he was, he was exciting and he was fun to watch, just full of life. He was busy being what God designed him to be, a happy squirrel. And I want us to think about the fact that God has designed us not to be woeful worshipers, Woe is me, people, in God's earth that He created for our joy and for our, our life. We ought to be happy campers, even amongst all the problems that are around this world. The psalmist tells us here that we should shout joyfully to the Lord. We see it also in Psalm 95, verse 1. I have a scripture there. Oh, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. That word shout joyfully is one word in the Hebrew. It's ruah. I'm not an expert on words, but I can read these things. And it means to raise a shout or a blast. To give a blast out of your lungs, out of your throat out of your mouth. Give a blast to God with joy. <laughs> oh, that can be uncomfortable for us sometimes. Are you saying, John, that we should come here and do some blasting? Amen. We should do some blasting. I don't mean that in a you know, demolition sense, but our voices should be heard to God and one another that we are excited to be saved. And I fall short of that so many times because I come to worship 
having not been thinking about the blessings I have from God. I may come to worship thinking about my trials or my workload or lack of workload or whatever is going on in my life, or finances and health. And, you know, it, it kind of stinks getting older, people. You know? And I can look in the mirror and I'm losing a little bit more hair here, a little more hair here, and, and my ears are getting bigger and so is my nose. And because the longer you get, those things keep growing, you know, and, and it, pretty soon I'm going to look horrendous. And you start thinking about all these things and, oh, and then this thing over here doesn't work as much and I'm limping here and, you know, we can just think about our problems. And we need to think about God. We need to think about what He's done for us and shout joyfully what God has done for us. It is not giving God the silent treatment. Where is it appropriate to shout? We see shouting in different things realms of life in different situations. Sometimes keep, people shout at their kids when they're doing something wrong. Sometimes we shout at our kids to warn them of danger or shout at somebody else, look out! One thing that I know is uh, acceptable in our, in our society is, is shouting at a football game. You know, we live in Texas. You all know what football is, right? Uh, I mean, football, we're supposed to shout. And basketball, you're supposed to shout. And tennis, you're not supposed to shout until the proper time. I like football and basketball better because I can shout. I can let it out. Woohoo! And, and you're not deemed crazy in the sporting arena if you shout. If you come before the Lord and we shout out praises, it could deem us crazy. We, we are used to being everything in order. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 40, it says all things must be done properly and in an orderly manner. Talking about the assembly of, of worship. And we come, sometimes take that beyond really what it was meant to talk about. In that context, there are people prophesying and speaking in tongues and they're out of whack and, and they're not waiting for everybody. The Corinthian church was kind of a wild bunch of people and yet they were saved. They were God's people. I think sometimes we want everything to be proper and in such an orderly manner that we would not really appreciate if somebody belted out some hallelujah if it wasn't just where we think it should be. I appreciate an amen once in a while and yet I am not one that is, feels free to give them. And I feel bad about that. Keith is an amener. Nate is an amener. John is a er. What holds us back from having a loud shout, a loud noise from our hearts because God did this. Amen. God said this. Amen. We are tentative. We hold back. And yet God says, shout joyfully to the Lord. He says it through the psalmist. Inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Not silent treatment to God. There is appropriate times to lift our voices in worship. Not just singing together, but singing should be with joy. Now, here's the thing. I have some pet peeves about singing. I'm not going to talk about it a whole lot because that's not what my sermon is. There are some songs that just don't deem themselves very joyful. I like the upbeat songs. You know, if I was going to pick all the songs for a song service, they'd all be, whoo, 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 whoo. Go get them songs. But we don't want somebody to glare at us, think we're crazy, think we're squirrely. I had to throw that squirrel in there. Because squirrels are squirrely. I, I was thinking about that. Why do we use that word squirrely? Because squirrels are just like, they're all over the place. And you don't know what's coming out of them next. It's kind of scary. Have you ever been in a congregation where there's somebody like that? You don't know what's going to come next. And you're like, well, I don't know. Well, maybe God put them there for our inspiration. All of us need to be ready to shout joyfully to the Lord. 
When Christopher was baptized last week, from the rear of this building, there was a, a loud shout. And most of us didn't shout. I think we probably should all shout. When somebody is baptized into Christ and their sins are washed away, they're added to the kingdom of heaven, that's something to shout about. It's a place we should say not only amen, but hallelujah, praise God, and we should just like be excited because that is a transfer from the kingdom of hell to the kingdom of God. And yet sometimes we, we want to make sure it's in order. I think it's in order in God's eyes to rejoice and to let God know we appreciate Him so much for what He does for us. It's not about saying an amen or saying a hallelujah. It's not about you. It's about God. And you saying, yes, God did this. Wow. And Psalm 95 1 says, Let us sing for joy, singing with joy. Turn your Bible over to Luke chapter four, uh, 19 for a second. Luke 19. We are familiar with the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem. We call it the triumphal entry. Verse 29 of chapter 19 of Luke. When he approached Bethphage and Bethany near the mount, that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples saying, Go into the village ahead of you. There, As you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one yet has ever set. Untie it. Bring it here. If anyone asks, Why are you doing it? You shall say, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away went, went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner said to him, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord has need of it. They brought it to Jesus, and they threw their coats on the colt, and they put Jesus on it. As he was going, they were spreading their coats on the road. As soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. Now that statement, that last statement about stones crying out is kind of startling. And I, I'm kind of a picture guy, a visual person. I, I think about these rocks, you know, open up their mouths. You know, not a pet rock, but a real rock, opens up his mouth and says something. The idea of a stone saying something is amazing. Now, whether that stone would have, would have said praise to God or he would have said, you are silly for not praising God like these people were doing. Jesus is saying, it is proper to lift your voices and praise the King of Kings. Let us be the same. Jesus is much more than a hero or a sports star. How many of us have ever been to a concert and screamed our heads off? Some of you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to say you've been to a concert. I saw Neil Diamond once. <laughs> Some of you got like, who? <laughs> and it was awesome. It was cool. But I didn't scream my head off. I just, I was with some other people. We were all, I was a new Christian and we were doing Christian things and we were just, you know, the people in front of us were doing stuff they shouldn't and it smelled weird. But, but I was doing the right thing and I would enjoy the music and I hollered once in a while. And, and how many of you have been to a football game or basketball game and you, you yelled loudly? Admit it. Okay. And it's fun, isn't it? Just make sure you're saying the right stuff. And, and when your team is winning or your guy's doing good, you scream and you yell, yeah, you know, go Broncos and, and all that kind of stuff. I haven't got to say that very much this year. And, uh, <clears throat> but the other team, on the other hand, the losers, they're not yelling the same stuff. They might be yelling something else. 
It seems like guys really have a need to yell once in a while. When we get together, we know we play, I was going to say beanbag, it's a cornhole. Cornhole. And when we play cornhole, it's exciting. I mean, I mean it's edge of your seat stuff. And, and, and it's like, mm, yeah. <clears throat> And it's like, yeah, we got you. We, you know, a lot of trash talk business because we love to gutter it out and just ugh, guttural stuff. That's what guys do. I wonder what women do when they get together to sew. <laughs> ooh, ooh, wow, look at that stitch. Woo! You know, I don't know what they do. Women, I don't know if you're that way, but us guys, we like to get it out. And what I want to say to you is, when it comes to what's really important, and Jesus is not just a sports hero, he's much better than that, he's not a great musician, he could do whatever he wanted, he is the greatest artist, by the way, because he created the world, and he created us, he is the greatest ever, and why can't we get a little more guttural, men, when it comes to God? We will praise our team, we will yell like, yell like crazy, and when we get into the congregation sometimes, it's like, <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's me. John Heat will sit over there. Nate may say the most fantastic thing, and I'm like, I should say amen, but I don't. Why not? Pray for me to open up, and I'll pray for you to open up, because God is the one who gets the praise. Is that not correct? Can I get an amen somewhere? Amen. Thank you. I look for a reference in the Bible about God himself having joy. I didn't put it on here, but in Zephaniah 3, verse 14, it says, Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. So we're talking about God's people need to be doing this. Shouting in triumph, rejoicing, exulting with our hearts. And then it goes on to say, The Lord has taken away his judgments against you. Isn't that us Christians? The King of Israel, the Lord in your midst, the Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exult over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love, and he will rejoice, <clears throat> he will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Can you imagine God shouting joy? I know that when God spoke on the mountain, giving the law to Moses, the people were scared. I wonder what it would have been like if he shouted in joy. Oh man, I forgot I had stuff like this to do. Um, <clears throat> so this scripture in Psalm 100 is a call to worship. And it's a call that we should be joyful to the Lord with thankful hearts. He goes on to talk about serving the Lord with gladness. So, <clears throat> serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful singing, Psalm 102. Serve is to, as it shows on the screen, it means to work or to slave or to be a laborer. It can also mean here to serve God in worship. Serving takes effort. I'm hoping that all of us came together today to worship with effort. We're not just coming here to sit and, and hopefully, you know, the sermon's okay and, and the songs are the ones I like and, and stuff like that and we go away that we have been uplifted. God wants us to come and offer ourselves as servants. Worshiping, giving to Him that which He deserves. Let us serve the Lord in our worship with gladness. As we've talked about, even the songs we've sung, you know, remember what God has done for you. Yeah, our world's a mess, but God's not. You remember in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, there was a lame man. Peter and John were on their way to the temple, and the lame man was, you know, asking for some money. And Peter says, I don't have gold or silver to give you, but what I do have, I'm going to give it to you. And he healed him, of being lame. That guy could walk. He jumped up and he walks with them and not just 
right then, he follows them into the temple, and in the temple where people are worshiping God in an orderly manner, he goes in there leaping about and praising God, and he's stirring up the mess, I mean the, the stuff. He's stirring up the congregation because he's so excited that he has been healed. What would we be like if somebody came in here right now jumping and he's praising God and coming up here and getting his fun and, and uh, it's like, Keith, that's your job. Take care of him, right? Calm him down. I love new Christians that come out of the world that don't know any better except give thanks to God. Because they've been saved. They've been healed. And they may not care what you think or about how they sit or how they're dressed or whatever. They're just thinking, Hallelujah! I've been rescued! This man had a great reason to be glad in the house of the Lord. What about us? So we see in this text, we should shout joyfully to the Lord. We should serve the Lord with gladness in our worship time together. Singing with gladness, praying with our heart, being excited, listening to the Word of God. Enter with thanksgiving, you know, in the worship. Entering His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, bless His name. Thankfulness is very important. It's an important key to our proper worship, I believe. We had a scripture read at the Lord's table about in John chapter 4, when Jesus said to that woman, those who worship me must worship in spirit and in truth. By the way, part of that truth is that we need to worship in spirit. You ever think that? So it is truthful to God's mind that as we gather, we need to be connected to Him. We need to be involved. Our hearts need to be in tune. And being thankful is such an important ingredient to help us do that. Remembering His blessings, all His blessings, count your many blessings we sang, about His protection, His care, His direction, the fact that He's preparing a place for us in heaven right now. It's ready. You may not think you're ready to go there, but he's ready for you to get there. Turn your Bible over to Luke 17 briefly. <clears throat> we should be thankful people. This is a story of ten lepers. You, most of you know this story. In Luke 17, verse 11, while he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leprous men stood at a distance to meet him, and they raised their voices. See, they raised their voices saying, We need help! Master, have mercy on us! And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, Turn back, glorifying God. Notice this. With a loud voice. Glorifying God. I don't know what he said. He didn't say what he said. But he's, you know, praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Awesome God. I don't know what he was saying. But he was thankful and with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet. And he gave thanks to him. He gave thanks because he could walk. Or because he was healed of leprosy. Just like the other man was so happy that he could walk. Healed of his diseases. This man was a Samaritan. When Jesus answered, then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found to return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go, your faith has made you well. The others were made well. The others were rescued of their disease and they failed to give thanks. Let's not be those people. Let us not be those people who have been healed, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and yet don't have thanksgiving in our hearts. 
all of us want to come back close to God and worship, not just here, but in our lives. I'd like to say this, that thankfulness um, has to be taught. Our children naturally demand, cry, and expect good things. How many of your kids, as soon as they can talk, tell mom, thank you so much for carrying me in the womb for nine months. You're awesome. You know, kids don't say that kind of stuff. We have got to train our children to say thank you. And some of us adults need to be trained again to say thank you. Sometimes it takes a tragedy. Sometimes it takes hardship. We take things for granted. We think we're, we deserve these things. I earned this. I work for this. Blah, blah, blah. And we are unthankful for the gifts of God. Remember Paul and Silas? Acts chapter 16. It's on the screen. They were beaten with rods many times. Thrown in prison, shackles put on their ankles. They're laying in this dungeon thing. I don't know what it looked like, but it surely couldn't have smelled very good. and It was not comfortable. They didn't have a, a sort of pillow or anything like that. And at midnight, we find in the Scriptures that they are singing praises to God. These are people that know who they belong to. And even though things are horrible... They might get even worse. We might be killed tomorrow. Man, let's praise God. He's awesome. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 6-7, As you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in Him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in Him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed, and overflowing with gratitude. Have you ever had an overflowing sink? Or an overflowing tub? Or an overflowing toilet? Ah, I shouldn't have said that one. I mean, there's things that happen. You know, we don't understand. Overflowing, it's like, it's more than enough. It's like too much in those instances. But God is saying through Paul, we should overflow with gratitude. It should just be coming out of us overly natural. That takes training by listening to God's Word, seeing our, our blessings, and knowing God. Shouting joyful to, the, joyful to the Lord, serving the Lord with gladness, entering His courts with thanksgiving. We also need to know the Lord because these, are, these all intertwine. The psalmist said, Know the Lord Himself is God and not we. In Psalm 95, it talks about the Lord being a great God and a great King. The Lord is God. He's a great King. He's a great God. Psalm 95, 4, talks about the Lord made us and everything else. You know, the seas are His. The mountains are His. We have songs about it, little kid songs. You know, the earth is, is His handiwork too. God made all these things. We need to know who God is. God made us. We are His people, His chosen people. If you are a Christian, you could raise your hand and say, I am chosen. I see some hands. Let's try it again. If you are a Christian, raise your hand. And you can say with me, I have been chosen. Not to play sports, not to look awesome. Not to ride your bicycle at incredible speeds uphill, both ways home. But He has called you because He loves you and He has called you and rescued you out of darkness into His marvelous light. And we have something to say about it. We should say it to one another. And our lives should say it to those around us. God is good. Aren't you glad God is good instead of what Satan is? The Lord is loving kindness forever and ever towards us. He's faithful to our generation. He's going to be faithful to Eric's generation. He's going to be faithful to Aidan and Natty's generation. And if the, the world keeps going and they have kids, God will be faithful to their next generation. He will not change. 
Amen? And we should be so thankful because no matter what's going on in the world, God remains the same. Know the Lord. Our God is good. Knowing God and being thankful for who He is and who we are, that we are His, it should give us great joy. Philippians 4, 4-7, through Rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. Remember, this is the guy that was beaten up and put in prison. Rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That slide is the first slide and the last slide. Same slide. We should be giving thanks to God every day of our lives, and especially as we gather together in worship. The next time somebody in our worship disrupts us a little bit because we're not used to it, maybe saying a hallelujah louder than usual, or amen, or shouts at a baptism, how about you just join in with them? That's what God likes. Jesus said, if you don't shout out for me, these stones are going to cry out. It has to take place. God is so good. God is so great. And we are His people. Praise God. This morning there may be some that are not yet God's people. Maybe you're here because you are interested in some way. You've come with a relative or a friend. You're not sure really what you should do. Maybe the Lord has pricked in your heart something. It says, I want joy and thanksgiving in my life. If you are burdened with sin, if you have not yet been baptized for forgiveness of sins, you can't have that same joy. You might have joy over your team winning. You might have joy over a, great, a good chicken fried steak. But you don't have the joy that lasts forever. Forgiveness with God. If we can encourage you anyway, let us know as we stand and sing.